Okay, hi guys. So I think I have all the issues worked out um, that we're kind of, we were experiencing last week with these videos. Um, so let me know if you still have issues with them. So first off, let's auto focus this real quick for you. So we are getting into 3.4. Um, so it's gonna go blurry for just a little bit as it auto focuses. Um, but that is solving exponential and log equations. So the first thing I just wanna kind of touch on um, is that an equation itself is just representing the fact that it has an equal sign within it. So up until this point, we've been dealing with expressions, which is without an equal sign. Now equations is with. So instead of simplifying, we're actually going to be solving these. So there's a couple different methods of how we're gonna solve these. Um, and I kind of bullet pointed all of them. Um, but the first, is just some properties. So these are properties that we've used all along, but I just want to remind you of them so that you can use them as we go along and just to kind of bring in some of the really important ones um, that we've talked about before. That first one is that if we have two things of the same base, those exponents get set equal to each other. So if this was a two to the fourth equals x, to, or sorry, two to the fourth, equals two to the x. Four would come down, x would come down. You'd be having four equals x. Okay, same thing with logs. If you get two logs on different sides of the equal sign, in which one of those, or both those logs have the same base, then you can drop the logs and set x equal to y. Another one is gonna be if you have a base of an exponent, with a log with the same base of the base of the exponent, it just equals what you were taking that log of, right? So these would just cancel. Um, so when we're kind of going through these, your a's are canceling up here, your logs are canceling down here, and your a log a, okay? a and the log a cancel to so just be x. Same thing. If we have the same base as what we'd set that log equal to, it equals just the x. So that x comes down. So the three kind of styles we're going to use in order to solve these um, is we're going to be rewriting the original equation with exponents of equal bases. Okay, so different ways that we can just rewrite the original equation um, using what we're already given. We can also rewrite an exponential into a log function or a log into an exponential. Um, so just some things to think about as we're moving forward. So I'm gonna give you a ton of different examples and then we're gonna just do a ton of different examples on your own for homework over these. Um, so these are huge, they can take a really long time to kind of get in the swing of things. Once you start figuring out ways that you can write these and rewrite these in order to solve, it kind of starts to get a little bit easier um, but until that point, it can be a little bit confusing just to try to get started. So when I look at um, this first equation right here, 2 to the x equals 32, my first thought, no matter what, this x has to come down out of this um, exponent here. When I have that exponential function, it's not going to work unless I, I'm not going to be able to solve for x unless I can get that um, exponent out of my exponent basically. So the way that I think first is the easiest way is think about what's ways that I could rewrite 32. Specifically, I would like to write this as 2 to the x equals 2 to some exponent. Right, we don't know what exponent yet, but we know it has to be some exponent. Why would I want to do this? If you can get this as a base of 2 and this as a base of 2, we can drop the 2s away and our exponents will be set equal to one another. Okay, so if this is possible, I want to do it. That's the first and easiest one to do. So we start thinking and we say, okay, well, 2 squared is what? 2 to the third is what? And you just keep working your way through. When you try 2 to the fifth, you actually do get 32. So these are two equivalent statements. The biggest thing with these is you cannot write something that's not equivalent on both sides, right? So the reason I was able to rewrite this side without touching this side is because two to the fifth is still equivalent to 32. 
if I brought in something like, like let's say I've divided 32 by a number to get to two, I would have had to do that to my left side as well. That's why we are rewriting this 32 as two to the fifth. So then we know twos and twos can cancel, leaving me with x equals five. So did I solve the equation? I did because I got an actual x value. Your x equals five. Okay, so let's move on to this one. I have log base four of x equal or minus log base four of eight equals zero. So these are logs with two same bases. What I'm gonna do is rewrite this by adding this second log to my other side. So I'm adding log base four of eight to both sides, allowing me to have log base four of x equals log base four of eight. Why on earth would I have done this step? If we have logs on opposite sides of the equal sign, which have the same base, okay, the base here is four, these cancel and you get to set x equal to eight. That allowed me to solve for x, so I'm done there. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit harder here. So in this next one, a few different things can happen. The easiest one is to play this out like we did A. Okay, we're working on C now. If I take A's thought process, this would be, I need to have some number to the exponent of x equals some number to some exponent. If I can get it written this way, these two numbers have to match. So the first thing I'm seeing is I do have a one third, but that one third contains a three. In order to get nine, the only thing I know to write as an exponent would be three squared, right? That's the only thing I can do. That's the only number to an exponent that's going to get you to nine. That tells me if I want this to work, this has to be able to be rewritten as a three as well. So how could we do this? How is this an accurate representation of what we just had before? So we're not quite there. There's one little detail we're missing. Okay, that detail is when I rewrite a fraction as a whole number, you can do this. If I wanna bring this number from my denominator up to my numerator, it has to be three to the negative first, okay? When we bring something out of the denominator, we make its exponent negative. Okay, you would have done this in algebra two, only you likely would have always went the other way. We don't like negative exponents, okay? We generally want to see a negative exponent, we put it down in our denominator. This time, we're using that rule to our advantage and actually taking it from the denominator up to the numerator and making that exponent negative because if I do that, now my bases are the same, okay? So just a couple steps left here. When I have an exponent to an exponent, right, I have three to the negative first to the x. Exponent to an exponent means you multiply those. So negative one times x is just gonna be negative x. Then I'm still set equal to three squared. Again, my threes are gonna cancel. Leave me with negative x equals two. Um, so obviously, I need to take that one step further and divide by a negative one, okay, in order to get me x equals negative two as my solution to c for x. Okay, so just know that you have those manipulative tools. One of the biggest things we do here is we manipulate and we rewrite in order to get to what we need. Um, and we use all these different properties to our advantage in order to solve these. Okay, so the next one is e to the x equals seven. So first things first, we would say, okay, well we have a base with an exponent. Is there any way that I could rewrite seven as e to some power so that it would equal seven. 
Um, the answer right off the bat should be no. While that number might be out there somewhere, and it is out there somewhere, we would never be able to figure that out. Okay, it would take us a trial and error process of lots and lots of time to be able to figure that one out. So it, that one's not going to work. Okay, we're not going to be able to do what we did for C or A for this one. This time we're actually going to bring in a little bit new of a concept. So we know that when we have an equal sign, we can introduce new things. Okay, so this would mean that if I wanted to divide by something, I could. If I wanted to multiply by something, I could. Um, if we wanted to square root or anything like that, we can do operations if we do it to both sides. So something I know is if I have, let me write this right um, up here. Let's write this up here. If I have natural log of E, it simplifies down to 1, right? Natural log and E cancel each other out. So is there a way I can use that to my advantage here? Okay, the thought process says I need to get rid of this E and to get this out of my exponent. If I add a natural log to my left side, I get natural log of E to the X. I know that my natural log and my E will cancel, leaving me with just the one part about this though, is what I do to one side, I have to do to the other, okay? So I would have also had to take the natural log of my right side, meaning that x equals the natural log of seven. And yes, eventually I do want you to actually find this number. Um, I don't even have my calculator on me right now, so I can't tell you that number. Um, but for right now, it's okay if you're comfortable with finding this in your calculator, you know you are. You can leave it this way just so I can check over your work and make sure that I see what you're doing, what your thought process was. Okay, on that same kind of thought process, let's look at E. So E is natural log of X equals negative three. So in this time, I'm trying to figure out, well, how in the heck can I get rid of a natural log, okay? Um, you can't just divide by it. That's not going to work. You have to have the natural log of something, okay? I can't just divide by natural log. So since I can't do that, there's another process that I can take. Um, I know that e to the natural log of x equals x, okay? Whenever we have the same base to our exponent as the base up here, right? We had that property that e and natural log will cancel, leaving me with just that x. So can I do that same process here? This process is going to be called exponentiating, okay? We want to exponentiate this, meaning we throw everything up into our exponent. So we will have natural log of x in our exponent and negative three in our exponent because remember what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So e is going to be our base because e to the natural log cancels and e will also be the base to this negative three, leaving us with x equals e to the negative three. Again, I'm going to want you to figure out what this number is, but for right now, I don't even have my calculator on me, um, so we can leave it like this. Okay, again, this process is called exponentiating. I'm able to do it because I did it to both sides. Let's look over to F now. Okay, looking at F, I again need to get down to just this X. You cannot just divide by log base three, right? That's not something that we're able to do. So since I can't divide by log base three, I need to get rid of this log base three. So again, that thought process is going to be exponentiating. If I have the base to my exponent, the same as this log, okay? So I'm throwing everything up into the exponent. If the base of this is the same number that was in my base of my log, then my log and my log base three cancel, 
which means I have to also have that base on the other side, right? So we can take that three and log base three and they cancel. And then on the other side, we can actually take three to the fourth power, which is 81. Oh, I kind of cut off my box there, sorry. That's 81. Okay, all these different processes um, just to be able to try to solve these. Let's go on to the back side. I have a couple more for you. Okay, here. Oh, let me center that. Okay. Um, so on this side, let's start with G. So one thing I also want to mention is that we always like to isolate. Like we're getting into some longer ones now. Okay, the other ones were always kind of smaller. Once we get into these larger ones, we like to isolate the term that involves our variable before we start using those kind of tricks that I just showed you. So I want to first isolate the 2x or the 2 to the x by dividing by 3. If I divide by 3 on both sides, I get 2 to the x um, set equal to 14. Okay. 2 to the x set equal to 14. So now I can kind of start over where I was before. I have my term isolated that involves my variable. So now I start thinking, okay, bases of exponents. Is there any way I can rewrite 14 so that it's 2 to some exponent? So we start going through our numbers. 2 squared is 4. Um, 2 cubed is 8. Um, and then I'm already going to bump over that 14 when I go 2 to the 4. So 14 is not possible by taking 2 to some exponent. Okay, so instead I start thinking about other ways that I can solve this. That dot shouldn't be there, sorry. Let's think back to some other rules that we have. If I have, and again we wrote all these in the beginning, but let's say I had a, the same base of this log as whatever I'm taking that base of. If there were an exponent to that, the exponent just drops down and that's what that whole function equals. This tells me, what if I added in a log base two? Again, you do it to one side and then you have to do it to the other. So log adding in this log base, base two on both sides, on this side it cancels having me drop the x down. And Again, I don't have my calculator on me. You can figure out this actual number in your calculator. Um, but for right now, this is okay. Log base 2 of 14. Okay, so some of these can get a little bit longer, but like, right, this was only two steps. We were dividing by 3 and then adding in that log. Let's go over to H. Couple more steps here. So you just have to think of this as any normal equation. If you were trying to solve for the term, that is associated with your x, that's going to be e to the 2x, right? So I want to get that term by itself. The first thing you do is add or subtract. So I'm going to add over 3 to both sides. Okay, let's not forget how we already know to simplify fraction or simplify equations. Giving me 4 e to the 2x equals 5. Okay, next step would be dividing by 4. We have e to the 2x equals 5 fourths. So yes, sometimes we're going to have fractions. It's okay. We can deal with them. They're not too awful. Now that I have my term isolated that involves my variable, I start thinking about what are my methods that I can go about to actually isolate this and solve for x. So use that same thought process that we had before. We added in a log base 2 to get rid of the 2. I would have to add in a log base e, but we know that log base e equals ln, or natural log. So I'm going to add in a natural log, or ln, to both sides. 
by doing so, natural log and e cancel each other out. Leaving me with 2x equals natural log of 5 fourths. The very last step we would have to take here would be dividing by 2. So when we do, do actually do this in our calculator, I want you to be careful. You'll have to take the natural log of 5 fourths first and then divide that number by 2. Okay, but for now, this kind of messy, nasty answer is okay. When I ha actually have you do these as well, I want to see this and then see your calculator answer. If I don't see this, I can't really figure out where you made your mistakes or if you made any mistakes. Or if you just tried to plug some of these into your calculator. Okay, last one. We're on to J. So, one of the very... Um, first rules that I gave you was that if you have same bases to exponents, they automatically cancel those bases and drop down the exponents. So don't be afraid to recognize that right off the bat, leaving me with negative x squared equals 5x plus 6. So one thing you're probably already seeing is, ooh, we have more than one x term. What I'm going to do is add x squared to both sides to give me 0 equals positive x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, oh, this right here. Okay, so we just added x squared to both sides. Now, in, just like in any other circumstance in math, you can always have the option of having two different x solutions. Whenever we have a quadratic, you're going to have two solutions. So we have to factor this. Okay, this has nothing to do with actual logs. We've been taught this far before. We're just factoring. You have to find two numbers that um, multiply to 6 and add to 5. Those two numbers is positive 2 and positive 3. 2 times 3 equals 6. 2 plus 3 equals 5. So now I can take each of these and set them equal to zero and solve to get x equals two and x equals negative three, okay? These circumstances won't come up incredibly often that you ever have a quadratic function, but the one thing with this chapter is that many different things and many different parts of math that you've already learned come back into play. So those negative exponents, any kind of exponent property, factoring, um, rewriting things from a fraction into a negative exponent. There's a lot of different things that you've already learned that you have to be good at and use your imagination and able to, and like your creativity and your problem solving skills and apply them to some of these problems, even though it's not directly what we're teaching. Okay, so it's one of those things where things you've learned in the past um, kind of creep up a lot in this chapter. And this would be one of them, just factoring. Okay, so that's at least two examples of every kind of um, thing you likely will see. Um, some harder ones on this page, some easier ones on the last one. Um, but reach out to me and let me know if you have any questions.